Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to Snowdonia. Someone's got a drone. This place is usually completely dead. Not Snowdonia as a whole, but uh, this part of it. But even here, the car park is full at the moment. But this is the last week of school holidays. So hopefully everywhere will go back to normal as of next week. Uh, anyway, I'm on my way up to the Dullinbothy. I'm not staying there. I'm just going to, to take some photos of it. And uh, I thought I'd get some photos of this, uh, I want to say Roman road on my way up there. I've got no evidence whatsoever that it's a Roman road. Just a guess. Also, I might take some shots of this. Um, I don't know what this is called either. Well, I do, but I can't remember. I don't know what any plants are called, but this stuff I, I do know the name of. Just, yeah, can't remember. But uh, maybe try and single out one of the strands of it. Maybe go for something like 50 mil. F28 to isolate and wait for the wind to play ball. Something like that. Oh, and I've got a new camera bag for the umpteenth time on this channel. Let me tell you about that. Seventy mil. F two eight. Well, there really is a lot of nice colour around this time of year. It's just tricky trying to get it all in one shot. But uh, well, if it was easy, it wouldn't be fun, would it? Right, camera bag. So you might have noticed over the past couple of weeks, if you've been eagle-eyed, that uh, I've had a different camera bag which has been this camera bag. This is a uh, Shimoda Action X 50, which is quite a bit bigger than the camera bags I've typically had. Uh, this is 50 liters or can be 50 liters or maybe it expands above 50 liters. It's about 50 liters. And uh, typically in the past I've used bags of about 30 liters. So this has in many ways an unfair advantage when comparing it to my other bags because I wanted a bigger bag. This is bigger, therefore it wins. Uh, now I asked on Instagram a couple of weeks back if you had any suggestions for bags, and lots of you said this, and luckily Shimoda sent me one. So uh, they've not asked me to say anything particular in this video. They, uh, they won't get to see it before this goes out. But uh, yeah, just so you know, in the interest of transparency, they sent me this for free. Now I feel like I make a camera bag video every year. Uh, and that's probably because I make a camera bag video every year. And I'm normally talking about the latest bag that I've got and uh, whether or not it's taken me any closer to finding the perfect camera bag. It usually has. The big breakthrough I had a couple of years ago was that I found I needed a dedicated space, as this has, for camera gear. Now, a lot of the brands will make kind of inserts that just sit within the bag that you can take out if you so wanted, and uh, it just gives you a nice dedicated space for all your gear. However, they also have room, as my previous bag did, for all the other stuff that you need to take on a trip. So food, drinks, um, waterproofs. Oh no, sorry, I expected the waterproof to be in there. It's, it's actually in here. But yeah, they have space for all the other stuff you need on a photography trip, which some bags that I've had in the past didn't. And uh, that always used to drive me mad. Anyway, the biggest beauty of this bag, other than it being bigger, than my previous bags, is that it's expandable, which I love because normally if you carry a really big bag and you don't have that much stuff with you, which happens on photography trips, a lot of the time we don't want to take loads and loads of stuff. We just want to go on a quick couple of hours hike and uh, we don't need to take all of our belongings. And on those trips, if you have a massive bag like this, for example, and you only put a couple of things in it, and let's say you're walking up a mountain, you're having to scramble, then in that instance, uh, you could end up with lots of stuff rattling around and uh, being displaced. If you've got food and stuff, that's not particularly ideal. With this design, which is a roll top, you can adjust the size of the bag for uh, whatever you have, which means that all of your stuff, photography gear and otherwise, will stay secure. And uh, I really like that about this bag. It's also a hell of a lot more comfortable than uh, my previous one. It's got kind of expandable shoulder straps. 
I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but uh, yeah. And uh, it's got a pretty decent spot for my tripod, loads of room for things like hydration bladders, and uh, yeah, just a really nice, very well-made bag that's, uh, well, perfect for me and my needs at the minute, I think. So I'm not gonna make a dedicated camera bag video again, but this is gonna be my new bag going forward. So if you notice that I've got a different bag, they're the reasons why. I, uh, I must admit, I'm absolutely nowhere near the bother yet. I've walked, I don't know, less than a mile from the car in about two hours. But there's just so much to photograph here. There's an old settlement down there that's surrounded by sheep at the moment. There's a rock with a tree growing out of it. Lots of sheep down there as well. Really know what's going on with that. Uh, then there's wild horses over there. I could just stay around here, but uh, I did tell myself to go to the Bothy, so I will do that. Via maybe a little detour, going to check out that settlement. Just as soon as I've finished my sandwiches, which when I have, I can uh, pop the foil back in the bag and do the roll top even tighter than I did before to make sure that my banana doesn't get hurt if I don't eat that now. So, very clever. I'm, um, I'm beginning to suspect that I have a bit of a camera bag problem, if I'm honest. I have 13, 14, 15 camera bags, depending on how you define camera bags. It's absolutely ridiculous. I've got a wardrobe full of them at home, and that's not an exaggeration. I should probably think a little bit about how I could do some sort of giveaway, if that would be of interest. Let me know if you've got any ideas, but uh, yeah, silly. Anyway, there is the, uh, the settlement. And I did want to go and take some photos when there were some sheep in and amongst it, but they seem to have disappeared, which is probably for the best, actually, because, uh, well, I put a ridiculous amount of cheese in that sandwich, and I'm not exactly fleet-footed at the moment. I, uh, I suspect, having not looked at it properly yet, that that previous image with the, uh, the tree, the rock, and the sheep would have been a lot better with a bit of atmosphere. Fog, you know what atmosphere is. And I think this is exactly the same, but still, still worth a shot, literally. Oh, I did not check the map properly because I didn't sign up for boggy uphills. I was thinking about five minutes ago, this would be a perfect spot in winter. I mean, not as colorful, sure, but it'd be nice to do in winter, but this will be soaking in winter. Impassable, I'd imagine. How's this for a cool ladder over the fence, by the way? Uh, 50 mil F2.8. Lovely stuff. All right, that way, I'm about halfway there. I mean, it stands to reason that a bothy is uh, in a hard to reach place. That's the whole point of bothies, that you can stay somewhere that's isolated. Yeah. Getting wet. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been waiting for the perfect place to take a shot of these trees. I've been uh, debating getting the telephoto out and I just thought, no, nope, on the way there, I'll wait until I'm close enough for 70 mil. And that moment has just about come, maybe. All right, well, here we are. I think I'll take a shot from here. I mean, I do want to get one closer as well, but from here, we don't disturb the cloud line with the top of the trees. So. I think that works quite well. 50 mil f6.3. Lovely. Oh, I see a bothy. Well, this is uh, this is what I come to see. The bothy. Very nice. I shall uh, go and have a look inside, and then start the way back. Um, it's the next morning, and uh, excuse my panting, I've just been walking uphill 
here in my local woods. I've come for a stomp and yesterday, but it sort of ended a bit strangely really, I, uh, I got to the bothy, took some photos, walked around, but I, uh, I just stopped talking. I don't really understand why. And then I just stopped filming. So the last few pictures that I got, I've not even got any footage of me taking or talking about those photos. So I don't know. I'm going to put it down to uh, newborn baby fog, not sleeping as much as I used to. So uh, yeah, that must be it. But in any case, all the best photos, all my favorite photos that I took yesterday will be up on my Instagram, which I'd appreciate you checking out and following if, uh, if you're so inclined. I am knackered. Anyway, I'm going to put it down as a decent reminder to um, try and talk through the photos that I'm taking because I don't think I really do any of that compared to a lot of photography channels and that's why I enjoy watching other photography channels because I think you can always learn from what other people are thinking in terms of compositions and settings and choices that photographers are making. So I will endeavour to do a bit more of that, certainly more than nothing at all, which um, is how yesterday ended. Anyway, thank you for watching. Also, let me know um, what you think of the camera bag giveaway, because I've got maybe two or three bags to give away, and I do want to make sure that they end up at uh, good homes where they're going to be used a lot. So uh, if you can think of any way to monitor that, that would be fantastic, because usually when I do giveaways, I get thousands of comments or whatever it is, and uh, trying to work out who is the best recipient or recipients of those giveaways is, yeah, tricky. This uh, this little spot down here, I mean, I can't pretend I've just happened across this. These are my local woods. But I absolutely love this scene. It's probably a decent place to uh, start my new hobby of talking through my compositions, actually. And uh, I mean, it's just so easy. It's not quite as nice as I've seen it on other occasions. When the ground's wet and if you use a polarizer, it's even more striking. And ideally, I'd love to see it when there was like a, a young deer, perhaps, kind of walking down this path. But maybe, maybe that's just ridiculously greedy. Use a nice wide aperture and just focus on the deer. It would be lovely, but uh, I have never seen deer here, so it's, it's unlikely. Anyway, I, uh, I always typically go for about 30 mil for this shot. I say always because I've, I've taken it quite a lot over the past year or so. And uh, essentially, I'm just trying to make sure that I get the detail in this tree here and that tree there, which really frames the path. So um, I'm going to shoot at F71 and focus somewhere in the middle of the frame, and that should give me a sharp enough shot for everywhere because it's not a particularly deep scene. And uh, yeah, as I say, 30 mil. Lovely. Just being careful not to chop off the, uh, the bottom of this tree because that, that would look a bit messy, I think. In fact, if I go back here, could probably go for 35 or even 40 mil. See what that does, a bit more compression. Trouble is then you end up with a bit of mess of the path down here, which I don't really want. So the alternative is to go wider angle and uh, closer, perhaps a bit lower down. Something like that. Yeah, anyway, is that? Is that useful stuff in terms of uh, me talking through what I'm thinking for compositions? Hopefully it is. Hopefully that was a, a reasonable example of what I'm aiming to do in future. Anyway, I'll see you next week. And um, I'm going to wait here for uh, a wet deer against the odds.